Hi guys, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and the holiday season and New Year's and welcome to 2023. So this is my first video of the new year and I am so, so excited because I got the Instant Pot for Christmas. Instant Pot for Christmas. <laughs> so I, I am excited because this is something I really wanted for Christmas now that I've tried it a few times. So the first thing I made was yogurt, which of course I love yogurt for breakfast, so that's what I made. But today I am gonna show you guys how to take a whole frozen chicken and we are gonna cook it in the Instant Pot and then turn it into some buffalo chicken cups. So it's a bit of a process, but I think you're gonna like this one. So let's get started and get our chicken prepped and into the pressure cooker. All right, so my first step is to get the seasoning ready for my chicken. So I'm gonna start with one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of onion powder, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of rosemary, one teaspoon of smoked paprika, a half a teaspoon of poultry seasoning, and half a teaspoon of black pepper, and half a teaspoon of salt. Um, I know I added some only a half a teaspoon of paprika, but I did go back and add another half a teaspoon, making it one teaspoon of paprika. Give it all a mix, and then you're just going to set it aside. Okay, I'm gonna get the chicken ready. So I have a six pound frozen chicken. I'm just gonna cut it open and then I'm gonna give it a rinse. Um, so what I didn't realize is it has one of those absorbent pads that they put under our meat trays, also in this bag of chicken. And I spent like 10 minutes fighting with it under some lukewarm water trying to remove it from the chicken. I did not realize that those absorbent pads are also put into whole chickens. I think this is the first time I've seen one in a bag with the chicken. Anyway, I fought with it for about 10 minutes. I finally got it off of the chicken and I rinsed it off, put the chicken back on my little um, baking sheet and then I patted it all dry just to clean it all up. And now I'm gonna put some oil on it. I'm using avocado oil, and I'm going to season the bottom of the chicken first, not the breast side, the underneath side. All right, so with the underside of the chicken all seasoned, I'm gonna just set it aside for a minute. I'm gonna go grab my pressure cooker, and I'm also gonna get one cup of water and I'm gonna mix in one teaspoon of chicken bouillon into it, just so that it has a little bit of flavor. Then I'm gonna pour that into my pressure cooker, add the trivet or the steamer that came with it, the little rack, um, and then I'm gonna put the seasoned side of the chicken down on the rack so the breast side is facing up. All right, so now I'm gonna take my avocado oil, drizzle it on top of the chicken, just rub it all over, and then I'm gonna use the rest of my seasoning that's in my shaker cup and very heavily season the top of the chicken. Once that's done, then I'm gonna take the chicken, put it into the Instant Pot, and put the lid on it. I'm gonna set it so that it is in the ceiling option, not the vented option, so that it pressurizes and then we're gonna set it. So, um, this is a new machine to me, so I'm still learning the settings. Um, so you're gonna put it on high, pressure cook on high, and you're gonna cook it for, I set mine for an hour, but I would recommend maybe an hour and a half to two hours instead. Mine turned out good, like it, it's cooked, but I would feel better cooking it maybe just a little bit longer. So um, anyway, I have an eight quart instant pot. I set it for an hour. Anyway, that's it. You let it go, set it for an hour, and then I will see you soon. Once my 
instant pot was done cooking after that hour I am leaving the lid on I am also leaving the vent in the ceiling position I'm not gonna vent it I'm gonna let it self um, depressurize so I'm gonna let it sit just as it is like this for another hour all right, so while the chicken's depressurizing, we're gonna get the cream cheese mixture ready for our buffalo chicken cups. So I'm gonna be using a half a block of cream cheese, which is around four ounces, and I'm gonna mix that with a handful of sharp cheddar cheese. I did not measure, I just use a handful. It's probably like, I don't know, maybe half a cup of sharp cheddar cheese. And I'm gonna mix that all up. Now that the cream cheese and cheddar cheese are mixed together, I'm gonna add some buffalo wing sauce. This is completely your preference. If you like it hotter or more mild, you add as much or as little of it as you want. I added a little bit at a time and tasted it in between until I thought it was just hot enough for my liking. I'm also adding in some bacon because why not? So I accidentally let the chicken depressurize longer than what I needed to. I got a little distracted after I made the cream cheese filling part. So it is all fully depressurized. I'm taking the lid off and it looks fantastic. It smells amazing. So from this point, I'm just going to put it in the oven under broil just to crisp up the outside. The inside is cooked, it's good. Um, it's The outside feels a little soggy, I guess. Still sort of wet and watery. So, putting it under a broil setting for about five minutes is just gonna give it that crispy outside rotisserie texture. Putting the chicken under the broiler for about five minutes really gave the chicken a nice crispy outside skin on it so as you can see I'm gonna start slicing it and it is so beautiful it is moist it is juicy um, it's just glistening so let's get this chopped up so we can get it into our cream cheese mixture so once you have your chicken all chopped up then you're gonna just take your mixing bowl that has your cream cheese mixture in it you're gonna add your chicken into it and you're gonna just Give it a good mix. At this point, taste it and see if you need to add more buffalo sauce to it or not. All right, so the next step is to take some uh, baking cups and put them into your muffin tray. I'm using some silicone ones. And I am also using wonton wrappers or wonton skins and putting each one into one of the baking cups. You could also use egg roll wrappers. It doesn't matter whichever one you would like to use. And then once I have those in my baking cups, I'm just gonna take a couple spoonfuls of our buffalo chicken filling and put it into each cup. Then I am going to top it with some more cheese because you can never have enough cheese. Then they are gonna go into a 350 oven for about 10 minutes. These turned out so well. They're a little crispy on the edges and warm and melty on the inside. They look fantastic, smell fantastic, and you could have made them in the air fryer too. All right, the last step is to make them look pretty and presentable. So I have a green onion, a couple green onions. I'm gonna chop them all up. Then I'm gonna take the buffalo chicken cup. I'm gonna put a little dollop of sour cream on it and sprinkle some of the green onions on top. And ta-da, it's all done. It's ready to be eaten. Now, if you have leftover buffalo chicken filling, you don't have to cook it. You can, you can turn it into a hot dip and eat it with nachos or pita chips or whatever you'd like. Um, I do have some extra leftover and I have some little pita chips that I'm gonna eat it with. But otherwise, it's all done. All right guys, so the longest part was actually making the chicken. The rest of this was really quick and easy to do. And only using half a block of cream cheese made about 12 of these little 
little cups. So, um, I made these because they were my husband's request and he critiqued them for me. <laughs> so, his feedback was, I didn't make it spicy enough, not enough buffalo in it. But then again, I don't really like a whole lot of buffalo, so once I started tasting a little bit of heat, I was like, okay, I think that's enough. But he said it could have used a whole bunch more. And he would have preferred if I had used like the, um, more like the, the, oh my gosh, what are they called? <laughs> Egg roll wrappers, that's it. Egg roll wrappers, instead of using wonton skins. The wonton skins are just, they're so thin and delicate, where the wonton wrappers would have given it a thicker, a bit more crunch to these little cups. Um, besides that, he said I stuffed them a little too much, a little bit less would have been good. But yeah, he went and he's already eaten like three of them, so I would say they're pretty good. <laughs> make them I'll make them spicier fill them less and I'll just use different wrappers I guess or um, um my gosh why can I not remember what those are called egg roll wrappers egg roll wrappers okay so I used I just used what I had in the fridge and I happen to have these egg roll wrappers the next time for him though so they turned out really well um it's quite versatile, like making them into these cups or like I have a little bit left over because I ran out of the wrappers. Um, you can just make it into a dip, a hot dip, put it in a dish, bake it, add some extra cheese, nice and hot and melty and use like some little pita chips or nachos or whatever. Eat it on crackers, you can eat it cold. You can really, because everything's already cooked, it's easy to use. So. Anyway, I think it turned out fantastic. This was a great idea by my husband, and I haven't tried one yet, so let's see. Mmm. They're all real good. Mm hmm I understand what he means now about having the thicker A-roll wrappers instead of these uh, spring roll skins it would have been a little bit better having that thicker crunchier outside crust um yes they are a little overstuffed <laughs> but i think it turned out good i'm very happy with it i'm gonna make them again um they are delicious so i hope you give this one a try happy new year again welcome to 2023 and i look forward to making all sorts of new videos for you guys and thank you so much for watching